Those of you expecting that the next generation iPhone will catch up in everything, let's just say it'll do so and it will not. Because yes, even if it's plenty early, some very trusted sources claim that the iPhone 13 won't bring every single upgrade they need to stay on top. We have a possible design for the Galaxy Z Flip 3 from Samsung, and well, it makes a ton of common sense, even if the leak is debatable. And in typical OnePlus fashion, we have some leaks of the OnePlus band design from none other than the best of all sources, pretty much. I'm Jaime Rivera, and seriously, this is like 2021 telling 2020, hold my beer. This is Pocket Now Daily. Let's begin today with deals, even on products that have not been launched. If you're eyeing the Samsung Galaxy S21, given all the rumors, you can actually reserve it as of today and you'll actually get a credit for it. Make sure you follow the first link in the description for more information. Sticking to Samsung, their crazy trade-in deals seem like if they won't be stopping anytime soon, which means you can still get the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2 for $1,000, a Galaxy Note 20 series starting at $400, with the Ultra setting you up as far as 400 bucks and then finally if you want the galaxy s20 you can get the s20 fe for just 150 bucks or the galaxy s20 ultra for 599 again these are trade-in deals so you need an eligible device now let's switch over to apple starting with the m1 mac mini which is currently 30 dollars off that leaves the 8 gigs of ram 256 gigs of storage model for 670 which is a pretty good deal and if you're looking for an apple watch the brand new se is 40 dollars off leaving the 44 millimeter variant for 270. We have more deals on Intel Macs that I actually won't suggest you go crazy for and other products in the description. There are a couple of companies that are really good at doing their own leaks, but man, nobody gets it better than OnePlus. Earlier this week, they teased the design of their upcoming OnePlus band, showing a corner of it, and now, well, we get to see pretty much everything. The company just listed an early access phase for their health application, which will be used to record things like heart rate, steps walked, sleep patterns, and more, you know, the usual stuff. In the application description, it mentions both a smartwatch and a fitness band. And once you get into the application, you can see the OnePlus band in its full design, including the display turned on. According to the leaks, the OnePlus band will feature a 1.1 inch AMOLED display with around 14 days of battery life and a $40 price tag, but it will be launched in India first. So yes, to the rest of the companies out there, do yourself a favor and take note. This is how you leak your products. How about if we move back to Samsung and discuss official launches as a, uh, I mean, last year at CES, we did get to see a ton of product announcements. I'm already going backwards when it comes to wishing we were at trade shows, but they're continuing to do it this year. If you remember last year, the company announced the Galaxy Chromebook for a crazy $9.99, but the company has just announced the successor, which has a better price tag with a couple of logical changes that make sense for this type of product. See, instead of a 4K OLED, it's now featuring a 13.3 inch QLED Full HD display, with the entry level model being powered by an Intel Celeron 5205U, Intel UHD graphics, four gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of storage. If you want the higher tier variant, it's powered by an Intel Core i3, and it brings up to eight gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. You're getting two USB type C ports, as well as a micro SD card reader. And of course it runs Chrome OS. It brings features like Wi-Fi 6, S Pen support, and stereo speakers. Where it gets interesting is that it's now starting at $549, which is far more logical, with the higher tier variant going for $699. I mean, last year we actually awarded the Galaxy Chromebook as one of our best of CES 2020. And uh, now that they've dropped the price and adopted QLED technology, which is actually my preferred display technology, it's not making it too difficult to do so again this year. A couple of weeks ago, we actually discussed the potential of Apple revamping their entry-level iPad, and uh, I, it's kind of due for a refresh, but we've covered the fact that it's not necessarily going to be that amazing change. According to a new report from Mac Takara, the new iPad would arrive with the same 10.2-inch display we get on the current model, but like the other reports mentioned, it will take some design cues from the old iPad Air, if not follow the same exact design. This means that we'll be getting a significant significantly thinner device, uh, more or less around 6.3 mm 
millimeters thick when compared to the 7.5 millimeters we get right now. The new design will also weigh at around 30 grams less than the current model. And the report also claims that this iPad will still bring the home button, meaning Touch ID is still alive and Cupertino is apparently still bringing the lightning board instead of USB-C. Previous reports also claim that the iPad will bring Cupertino's A13 Bionic 4 gigs of RAM and it's getting a price cut to just $299. Rumors hint that we will be getting it in spring 2021 and apparently this will not be the only iPad announced so stay tuned it's getting interesting. And going back to Samsung, how about if we discuss the company's refresh of the Galaxy Z Flip as uh, we've been covering the possibility that we're getting a new unit, which we're going to call the third generation because that's pretty much what it is. But if you remember, last year we got it at Samsung's Galaxy Unpacked, and I'm also reminiscing at the last show that we ever participated in. This year, apparently, that's not necessarily going to be that easy. Now we have some renders of the possible design from Let's Go Digital, showing what we should expect this fall. Now, we don't know if this is fan-made or the real deal since it's pretty early. And also because this design comes from a Korean forum and it takes elements from the Galaxy S21's design when it comes to the camera module and that lilac color variant and in addition to the gold hinge and the accents. At the front, we get pretty much the same design from last year, but what's most interesting is the outer display which has some major space when compared to the thumb that we got last year. The thing is, even if we're skeptical if these are fan base renders or the real deal, I hope they're real because let's be honest, I mean, they're pretty cool. And finally, the hottest news today have to do with Apple and the iPhone 13. And stop looking at me funny. I know it's weird that it is already the hottest news when it's so early, but you gotta admit the rumors have not stopped. According to Ming Shi Kuo's latest report, Apple's usual three main lens suppliers will be tasked with delivering the components for the 2021 iPhones. However, after looking at the technologies and the production lines, Quo concluded that there won't be any significant upgrade to the iPhone's camera, and that's actually for the next two generations. Of course, it doesn't mean that the overall performance of the camera will stay the same as there's still room for major improvements when it comes to the software, like what Google has been doing for years and obviously lagging behind. So it looks like Apple will work on perfecting their computational photography, and they consider that these lenses are good enough to last an extra couple of generations. If you watched our previous Pocket Out Daily, it looks like Apple really wants to focus more on the display of the iPhone 13 by shrinking down the notch and bringing LTPO technology into the display for high refresh rate. I guess the most important question is, do you care about no updates to the camera, yes updates to the screen, when the company's already lagging behind sort of in both of these things? I mean, I think they get the camera right so far, uh, but uh, I think that honestly, they should do more than just that, but that's just me. Leave us a comment down below. We'd love to know your opinion. Friends, again, if you want to get the news earlier, follow us on pocketnow.com and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. Also, follow us on social medias. Our extended coverage happens on Instagram. And follow me on my personal handles to see me not be surprised by 2021. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week, but we have coverage over the weekend.